So we're going to learn how to calculate the atomic weight, also known as the average atomic mass. The example we're going to use will be for potassium. So here's the data you would get from the mass spectrometer. You turn the mass spectrometer and you set it to zero by running carbon through it and finding the carbon-12 isotope and you simply make the carbon-12 isotope read exactly 12. So then everything else is relative to carbon-12 being exactly 12. So here's the mass spectrometer data that you would get for potassium. There's three major isotopes that would exclude you know, very radioactive isotopes. Potassium-39, uh, potassium-40, and potassium-41. And here is the percent abundance. This would be given in the mass spectrometer data is the area under the curve. So most of the area under the curve, in other words, 93% of it is going to be coming from uh, potassium-39. So you have a small amount of potassium-40 and some also you have some potassium-41. The major isotope of potassium is potassium-39. Then on the x-axis, from the data you would get from the mass spectrometer, would be actual, the actual mass in terms of AMU, in other words, a relative mass. So here's the data from the mass spectrometer. And to save time, I already wrote this out. So here's the three isotopes again, and I converted percent abundance into abundance. So this represents parts per hundred, and this represents parts per one. So if I take this and divide by a hundred, then I get this. I'm gonna take that abundance, multiply it by its mass, and I'm gonna get what's called the mass contribution. So I did that for all the different data that I have, all three isotopes. You can see that the largest contribution by far is going to come from potassium-39 because that's the most abundant isotope. So in terms of significant figures, I have one, two, three, four, five, six over here, more over here, so I'm gonna be limited to six significant figures. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The one there is not gonna be significant. So I put the arrow right here to show us that the uncertainty right here is going to occur in that decimal place. So that's going to be 0 0.0001. So I wrote that down here, 0 0.0001. So here I have four significant figures. Here I have four. Here I have six. I also have six over here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that nine right there is not significant. Then when I add these up to get the total uh, mass, I get this number over here, but in terms of the laws of um, addition and subtraction for significant figures, I'm really going to go by the uncertainty. So I can keep this one, I can keep this one, I can keep this one, and I can keep this one. But this one over here, I have to throw away. I cannot keep that. These last two digits over here are not significant. So I'm getting rid of that one, it's less than five, so I'm going to just drop it. So the final answer is 39.0983 atomic mass units. So that is the atomic weight for this data. Now, how does that data correlate to what's on the periodic table? So here's the periodic table here is the um, atomic weight given here. So 39.0983 happens to be the same exact number as we got here. Well, most likely because this data right here was similar to the data used to get that number right there. So you have to realize the numbers on the periodic table are what we call accepted values. So the Congresses get together of scientists and they decide that, well, this is the number that best represents all potassium samples that come from Earth. But in fact, different samples from different parts of the Earth are going to be different. The world is not homogeneous. So here the abundance happens to be this amount, 
If you go to another part of the world, this might not be 93.2581. It might be, say, 91 or 92 or something like that. So the data gives you this number. That's what we're trying to get you to learn how to calculate. And how it relates to this, it may or may not be the same number depending upon where the sample came from. So the other thing about this is that what we did is this calculation is called a weighted average. If you were to take the regular average, in other words, divide up these three numbers and then divide by three, you would then be assuming that the percent abundance would be one-third, one-third, and one-third. That's an unweighted average. But here we have a weighted average where the weight is actually how much there is of each thing. So the, here the greatest weight in other words, the greatest mass contribution is coming from potassium 39.